I'm making a video game to scare my girlfriend. Now, there's a couple of concerns that I want to get up and out on the table here. First of all, if I am making a video game with the sole purpose and intent of terrifying my girlfriend to the best of my ability, does that make me a jerk and a bad boyfriend? Yep. Now, in my defense, I did talk to my girlfriend about this. I told her I wanted to make a video game with the intention of scaring her, and she said that was cool. Maybe she wasn't listening to me. Second problem is that this isn't really a bit or anything to try to prove something like it wasn't like my girlfriend came to me and said babe did you know i'm not scared of anything then i say are you challenging me no uh my my girlfriend is scared of everything because i don't have any experience in really making anything scary uh this sounds more like a plus i haven't even started and i already I already won i guess the reason why i bring this up as a concern is that i have the opportunity to take the easy way out so to speak and i want to avoid that i, I want to make something that is actually decent so those are my main concerns with those out of the way let's go ahead and get started making this game to scare my girlfriend by the way if you saw my other videos about the little girl wandering alone in the cornfields and you're worried that i've dropped that game don't worry i haven't i just had a couple projects going on at the same time and i thought this one would make a cool video you can check out those videos on my channel if you haven't seen them yet. So I started making this game where the player is a mother in a house with her daughter and the mother is trying to protect her daughter from this creature who is trying to break into the house to kidnap the daughter. The creature I came up with for this game is pretty heavily influenced by the rake which is a creature from an urban legend creepypasta of this creepy looking humanoid thing that sits at the foot of your bed when you're sleeping, and I think there is a story about it trying to take somebody's kid. It ended up looking a lot like the Redead from Zelda. But this guy that I created, he has a pretty tragic backstory of being a product of cult-influenced parents and a lot of really bad rituals done to him. Pretty generic indie game horror story, if I do say so myself. Spoilers, I didn't make this game. After getting just part way through making the house that you were going to be defending your daughter in, I realized something. First of all, the house sucked. Second of all, if I'm making a game to scare my girlfriend, wouldn't it be better if I I asked her what would actually scare her. Babe, what would be the scariest thing for you in like a, a video game or like a movie or something? The scariest thing in a movie? I think ghost. I'm really scared of the like the Asian type of ghosts. Like the ghost girls? Yeah. I felt pretty stupid about this. I mean, she probably would feel scared playing this game about this thing breaking into your house, but probably would not be as scared as if the game were based around her fears. I realized that I could have just kept the same game about protecting your daughter, but instead of having our cult rake redead creature, I would swap it out for the ghost woman. But I decided I want to start fresh, so I was thinking about this. And you know what's scary? Sitting in a bathtub in a building all by yourself at night, taking a bath and then hearing a sound of somebody else in the house with you that shouldn't be there. Listen, I'm trying the best I can. Taking a bath in an empty house spooks me out at least a little bit. Does that sound scary to you, babe? Yes. Okay, so here's the game idea I had. The player is in the bathtub trying to take a bath and the ghost lady is trying to get her. There's all these things that keep on happening inside of the bathroom that you need to manage. The TV keeps on turning on randomly. The cupboard door spontaneously opens and closes. The faucet to the tub keeps on turning on and spraying water. And you're trying to keep the ghost lady from getting to you. Kind of sounds like another FNAF game, but that's okay. Here's the bathroom that I made in Blender. I love the way it looks in Blender. It looks so good. But then when I put it into Godot, the game engine I'm using, it all of a sudden just looks like crap. I think it has a lot to do with the lighting, which is something I fix later on. While the player's taking their nice bath, I want to be able to turn on the TV, turn it back off again, open and close one of the cupboards, turn on and turn off the faucet to the tub, turn on and turn off the light switch to the bathroom. I wanted the ghost lady to walk past the bathroom door, and the only way that you can see that from your position is by seeing her reflection in the mirror that's on the other side of the bathroom. When she walks past the door, she will stop at the door frame. If you see her in the reflection, you have to quickly close the curtains before she peeks in, otherwise she's going to come and get you. Just sitting there flipping switches and opening and closing cupboards waiting for the monster to peek in is uh, pretty boring. There's got to be some form of progression here, something for the player to work towards. And that's when it came to me. What about candles? You know, I, I could set up a bunch of candles around the tub that the player would have to light in order to complete the game. I know there's some people who like to take baths with candles. I've never tried it before. I don't even bathe. While the player is lighting candles, they also have to manage all the different paranormal 
paranormal activity things that are going on around them. So I put together this little matchbox and I gave it a texture with lore written all over it. Here's the matchbox and the match in game. I decided that in order to successfully strike the match, I wanted to have you play a little mini game. You gotta land the marker in the right spot. The candles I made for this game take the cake as being both the easiest thing I've ever made in Blender and also the best looking thing I've ever made in Blender. I mean, look at this. I, I swear my mom owns candles exactly like this. All right, now it's just time to try lighting this. Ah, see, that, that's nice. Let's just let's see the lights off. Uh, you know, I'm gonna have to fix this ugly lighting problem eventually. My mom always said you can never have too many candles. I made a cool sparking animation for when you try to strike the match against the matchbox. Oh, there's a TV again. All right, I think I finally got the lights figured out. Let's check this. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. All right, let's let's try with striking a few matches here. You know, okay, I, I I think there's still a lot that can be done here with lighting. I'm I'm no expert here, guys, but I think this looks a lot better than before. This is problem that I just could not figure out, no matter how hard I tried. See, I can turn the TV on and off, no problem, when the lights are on. But when the lights are off, if I try to turn the TV on, it'll just start playing the video with no light. A regular TV is emitting light, and so you can see it in the darkness. But this is not. Whenever I try adding the emitting ability to it, it drowns out the video. I can't even see the video playing. So it doesn't light up the video, it just lights up the object. I don't know if this is a problem with Godot 3D or if I'm just an idiot and I have no clue what I'm doing, but I couldn't figure this out. I came up with a solution instead. If the TV is on and the light turns off, or if the light is off and the TV turns on, it'll automatically switch back and forth between the video of the woman swimming and a blank screen static. So this is fine. I didn't really need the woman swimming in the dark anyway. Static is creepy enough. It's about time that I start making the ghost lady. So I wanted to model this ghost woman off of the drawings that I had made previously. I first put together a boxy looking female figure in Blender. Then I kind of shaped that figure into the general shape I wanted for this ghost woman. And I thought I was okay with this, but then I realized that she was still a little too dang sexy. She just doesn't make a good monster when she's all sexy like this. Second try, I think I did better this time. She looks a lot more disturbing. Had to get rid of that sexy bend in the back. Time to give the sexy body a sexy face. I found a nice picture online of a lady and I tweaked it. I wasn't quite sold on the picture I'd put together, but when I put it onto the model head, oh, it started to come together. Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, well, that's nice. I did a little bit of research on what things look like when they've been sitting in the water dead for too long. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to show you that here, but I kind of threw together a texture of what that looks like. I don't think what I drew up for this texture is all that disturbing, but if you are easily disturbed by fleshy looking images, just skip ahead for a few seconds. Just warn now. Here's the texture. The skeleton, I'm not really sure how I feel about that, but it doesn't really show up in the model anyway. When I throw it on the model, it looks all right. I can be freaked out by this. It's not perfect, but I think it looks freaky enough. Up to this point, I've been dropping some maybe not so subtle hints about the backstory of this ghost lady. Some of you might be thinking that if I wanted her to look like she had been sitting in the water for a long time after drowning or something, then her body needs to be a little bit more bloated. I'm aware of this. I like how she looks kind of skeletal. I haven't really tried tried to make a more bloated model for her, but I might try that out to see how it looks in the future. You also may have noticed that the model that I've created here doesn't quite match the Asian ghost lady genre that my girlfriend was referencing to. I was just trying to be unique, but if you guys think it would look better for the monster to look more like the girl from the ring, then let me know. All right, let's keep going. I decided to duplicate the head and make it its own entity so that I could have it peer out of the water in front of the player. It looks a bit like a balloon, which I'm not really sure how I feel about that, but it is pretty pretty creepy and maybe a weird head balloon could fit in the story somehow and it would be pretty dang freaky seeing this thing rise up out of the tub in front of you i might have her head slowly or quickly rise up from the side of the tub let's see this in the dark oh yeah <laughs> next up is to get this girl moving around outside and inside the bathroom as i mentioned before one of the things i want this girl to do is walk past the door frame and peek inside the bathroom what i want to do is if the player doesn't react properly by closing the curtain then the ghost will come charging in and end the game in Godot, there are many different methods of getting something to move. I decided to focus on two different methods, path following and navigation. If you're not aware, navigation is where the thing you want moving around is told two things. One, where it needs to be going, and two, where it's allowed and not allowed to go. With that information, it comes up with its own path, and it follows that path until it reaches its destination. Path following is similar to navigation, but with path following, you are the one who makes the path, 
and the thing that you put on that path will follow it. Navigation has a lot of problems, mostly because computers on their own are pretty stupid. <laughs> But path following has its own problems. It can only go to a destination if the destination is staying in one spot. I actually ended up using both navigation and path following. Navigation for when I want the ghost lady to come charging after the player. Path finding for when the ghost lady is doing something else. But it took me a little while to figure out exactly how it worked. Yeah, this is freaky, but not what I wanted. Okay, alright, we're getting somewhere. Oh! Oh. Uh... What? Excuse me? I'm trying to take a bath. There's a lot to be desired still. I came to an awful realization. This game is still pretty boring. Playing this little mini game swing slider thing over and over again, lighting these candles, just sucks. It was then that I had my second spike of intelligence. That's two in the span of a month and a half. Not too bad. What about having multiple types of mini games, not just the swing slider? What about like a whack a mole and invaders that slap the insects? A 2D platformer? Maybe even playing a little game of Tetris in there, if that isn't something that would get me in trouble with copyright. Right? Jeez, I need to look this stuff up. And I can randomize these mini games every time you try to strike a match, it's a different mini game. We're going meta here, boys. It's the game within the game. All right, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't really know how well this is going. It seems like it's got some cool ideas with it. It also seems like I'm maybe trying too hard. Also, just making something that isn't really scary at all. Maybe I need to just keep the lights off the entire time. That would make it more scary. Or maybe I need to add like some slime on the walls, make it look more grungy in here. I've been thinking about maybe having some different actions and positions for the ghost lady maybe she'll be like crawling on the ceiling or something i have come up with some lore ideas but if you have anything i want to know your storyline for this this girl for this bathroom game if you want to find out how this game turns out and how well it scares my girlfriend subscribe if you haven't already and go ahead and check out my other videos if you want to see some of the other games i've been making